Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, reaching out to you today on, on the Saturday, February 13th, uh, regarding some very important things that are going on uh, here in the state of Nebraska and for many communities. Uh, so I, I brought along a, a good friend of mine to talk about this very important uh, subject. Um, you know, throughout 2020 with COVID-19 and everything, we saw a lot of, of tragedy, a lot of suffering. And so I just wanted to um, just reach out to my friend and talk about some of these things because when we talk about uh, you know things like legislation, when we talk about ways to protect our communities, um, if you don't do this sort of stuff for a living, it can feel kind of overwhelming and confusing. So I just want to reach out to my friend and say, uh, Brother Chato, good morning to you. How you doing? Hey, what's up, uh, Romulo? Good morning. Um, you know, we're trying to stay uh, nice and warm in this like crazy cold weather. Uh, it is really cold right now for anyone who's not in Nebraska. You know, zero degrees, and and here we are. And just thank you for for inviting me to have this conversation. And you know, unfortunately, this is a not a very happy conversation. And in, in fact, it's a very uh, disheartening to the point that you know uh, it's not something that I'm passionate about. It's something that I'm uh, upset about. I'm angry about. I'm I have a yanto in my heart about these conversations that. We're going to be talking about um, even to the point where, you know what, normally I wouldn't do this type of stuff. Um, I'm a, a social worker, mental health uh, therapist, and, uh, you know, I dedicate myself to that. And beyond that, uh, you know, haven't really done much uh, getting involved with uh, policy or advocacy. But um, I think within these past uh, this past year of 2020, um, Man, all kinds of things happened, and and it really lit a fire in people across the country. Right, people began to step out of their comfort zones. Even during a pandemic, people were out on the streets, right, using their voices. Uh, people, um, mass numbers of people going out to vote. Um, so we're we're seeing a, a change in climate uh, across the country from what it was this, these past four years, and uh, so. Yeah, you know, I'm glad that we're able to have this conversation today. Um, so thank you. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and you know, what, what I've really come to learn this past year is the importance of protections and policies and, and getting, you know, certain laws written there in place to protect, you know, different people in different circumstances should an adverse situation like COVID-19 happen. And I know in, in communities such as, you know, Crete, Nebraska, um, you know, there's Grand Island, there's Lexington, there's Dakota City, uh, there in Omaha, where, where you're from, you know, a lot of the uh, meat packing plant, meat processing plant workers, whatever you want to call them, call them essential. Uh, but the reality is these workers really suffered a lot, you know, throughout the year and still in, in a lot of regards can, can be very, very vulnerable to what's going on with, with COVID. Yes, the vaccine's coming out. But um, I just want to get kind of your input, um, you know, not only from the Omaha, but just in general. I mean, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? The people you talk to, is there still that fear? Is that is there still that concern? Well, you know, and I, I come from a, a perspective, right, uh, as a community member, um, born and raised in South Omaha, uh, spent some time on the East Coast in D.C., uh, also spent some time out in uh you know, uh, San Jose, California, lived out there for several years, uh, recently transitioned back uh, once COVID, uh, you know, started to hit the the community, I mean, across the world. And so, um, you know, my family has a history of working in the meatpacking industry. Um, migration from Mexico, uh, arriving to Omaha, Nebraska, uh, on my mom's side, migrant farm working, ended up at the Union Pacific Railroad. We're talking about the 1930s. Dad's side, uh, migrating to work in the meatpacking industry um, during the, the Reagan administration. And so one of the things, you know, that is, is kind of been put on the table um, is the legislation, it's LB 258, uh, Healthy and Safe Families Workplace Act, right? Now, what, what really boggles my mind, right? As a kid, I used to believe that my dad was Superman. Superman in, in, in the way that, you know, he would always go to work. Five o'clock in the morning, I would hear him rustling through the home. Uh, 
you know, washing up. Our house is small. It's a two bedroom house, so you can hear everything. Washing up in the restroom, going to uh, the refrigerator, opening up and grabbing his brown bag, lunch, um, two burritos, a jalapeno from the garden and a can of Pepsi. And you could hear the ruffling of the brown paper bag. And then he would open the door and lock it and you would hear him out, you know, and he was on his way, a superhero heading off to save the world. Um, and he would work long, long hours. And so one of the narratives that I would hear is that, man, what strong work ethic, because my dad would never uh, miss a day of work, never. You know, even, even when it would come to, uh, you know, maybe feeling sick, maybe feeling ill, um, he was a hard worker. And that's the kind of the story, right? Hard worker. We see, uh, you know, in different places where we have farm workers as well. This, this narrative of people working hard out there, long days, long hours. And, and the truth of the fact is this, man, my dad wasn't Superman, right? He was just a man that was trying to provide for his family, right? Wanted to provide a home, provide the essentials, provide food. Um, and so uh, he never had paid sick leave, you know? He's one of many, right? And uh, many, 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 I'm, I'm a child of a, of a meat packer and in South Omaha and across the state, there's thousands of us, right? And because of his sacrifice, I was able to go off and get an undergrad degree and live in DC and go and get a master's degree and become a mental health therapist, right? And I can work from home, right? I can take a day off for a mental health. But you know, the fact of the matter is that people that work and uh, certain industries such as meatpacking, they can't take a sick day. They can't take a paid sick day because they don't have any, right? So my dad's been working there for 40 years and he's one of many and he's not the one who's the, been working there the longest. So we've got people that have worked there longer. Imagine that 50 years, not being able to have a paid sick day. That's, uh, that's tough and that really hits home. I mean, you know, depending on your upbringing and, and where, how you grew up, you know, your parents and the type of, of life that, that you guys lived. Um, when your parents don't have access to, to paid sick leave, maybe you as a little kid, you don't think too much about it. But when you turn, you know, into your 20s, your 30s and your 40s, you get older, they get older too. And now at 35 years old, I can see the damage, the wear and tear of my, both of my parents having to work every day, never taking a day off because you know, they, they either wouldn't get paid and can't then feed their family or, you know, if you take a day off, you might even put your job or position in jeopardy in some cases, wherever you work. And so the concept of paid sick leave to me is just like a shred of, of decency. And, and, you know, I, I'm not the most knowledgeable guy on this stuff, you know, and, and when it comes to the legislature and all that, but you know, what, what this bill, this LB 258 is, is proposing seems like a, a minimum step forward. And, and I don't want to, you know, disrespect or, or understate what that bill does, but this is not anything luxurious. This is not anything that, you know, is, is, is out of reason. This is the ability for a worker in Nebraska to accrue paid sick leave based on them over time working for that employer. And I think about, you know, gosh, if, if my mom would have been able to not be as stressed all the time and always working. We used to say you work 48 hours in the day. You know, now, I don't know. I, I, I can only speculate what, you know, a better health she might be in today. And she's my hero and I, you know, she's, she's, she's my mama. So I just want to uh, convey those thoughts. No, definitely, definitely. Like, and like I said, I, I feel like it's like, why are we having this conversation, you know? It doesn't even make sense in my mind. Why isn't this, uh, it, it should be a, a, a God-given right, right? That people have the right to get paid for a sick day. Um, when all across the country, there's occupations that people have this, this ability. Um, and these are people that are considered essential workers, but yet we treat them as dispendable. Um, and so, you know, for us, our families aren't dispendable, right? Um, I, I saw some powerful, powerful advocacy, um, you know, at the beginning of this pandemic, when it really began to hit in Nebraska, 
And I would hear uh, the stories of the children of meat packers and uh, some of the advocacies that were done uh, across the state and, and some of the smaller uh, towns, Grand Island, Lexington, Crete, uh, yeah. for example. Uh, and it was powerful. It was powerful. Um, you know, and I became emotional when I would hear some of these stories because that was that's me. That's uh, that's my family. And so, you know, I'm really trying to encourage people. Uh, this bill uh, had a committee hearing um, this past Monday. And so we're, we're kind of to the point where we're wanting to advocate. People have stated that they wanted to submit letters, right? And a lot of people don't get involved. I, I said, I, I, I haven't gotten involved in this kind of uh, advocacy, to be honest. But, um, but now now's the time, right? Now we're, we're seeing that um, we got to hit it from all angles. Um, from the protests to the advocacy for the legislation to the social media to informing people. And so we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, right now we're asking people to email um, the the committee, right? Uh, the labor. Yeah, the business and labor committee, right? Because, you know, it's, it, and that gets me is that there's lots of good ideas. And, and this is, you know, the legislature in general, whatever you're passionate about or whatever's meaningful to you and your people, your communities, whatever. But when, when not enough of us raise the volume on these things, then, you know, these senators or whomever are going to think it's not that important, that things are just fine. These problems have already been solved. And so I, I, I thank you for reaching out to me too, because you help motivate me because I personally have not been the most uh, type of person to write such a an email or a letter to a, a senator, you know. So I mean, this this if each of us contributes a little bit, then we can all raise the volume on this, you know, and and it, get these senators to realize this is important to us Nebraskans all across the state. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, and and so that's what we're urging people to do right now is to uh, to send out an email. Um, there's a couple of ways, you know that. We're, we're learning how to, to be a voice and get active. And um, so I, I think people can email uh, or message you on this account, the Romo Media. Sure. Uh, and then we can also, you know, help out and provide uh, some templates that other agencies. So this is an effort that's being done across the state, right? And that's one of the things that I feel kind of motivated about is that we're seeing uh, coalitions being formed uh, statewide um, because it can't be done within little silos, right? Egos have to be put aside, um, you know, and, and there's a time to lead and there's a time to follow and everybody uh, plays a role and can contribute. And so we don't need people that are about uh, taking the light, right? It's not about the spotlight. It's about these families. It's about my dad. It's about my uncles. It's about my cousins. You know, um, it doesn't matter what your credentials are. It doesn't matter what your resume says. You know, this is about people. It's about uh, humanity. And so uh, um, with that, you know, there's a, another piece of legislation um, that, you know, again, I'm sad as I'm, as I'm having this conversation with you. You know, the fact that um, we're talking about, um, what is it, the LB241, right? Meatpacking Employees COVID-19 Protection Act. It's like we've been in a pandemic for a, for a freaking year. And we're talking about trying to submit and sign legislation to protect meatpackers when we had huge outbreaks, right? Now, people may say that there's been some adjustments and there definitely has been, right? There's been some definite adjustments that took a long time to happen, longer than it should have taken. Um, but we've got some safety precautions that have been in, implemented in different working environments. And, and how do I know this? Because I, I, I live in the community, right? I'm connected. I know people that work in these places, right? Um, and so we hear that there are different things that have been implemented. But I, I think one of the big things about this piece of legislation that's important is that they're wanting to uh, pass this legislation to keep them accountable, right? Because at what moment can uh, 
an employer say, well, you know, we've done it. Things seem to be getting better. Let's go ahead and we don't have to implement the, the you know, the six feet of social distancing. We don't have to implement this hand sanitizer or, you know, bring your own mask or, you know what I mean? So hmm. the legislation is, is trying to implement uh, some accountability, um, uh, some regulation to have it in place. Um, we're talking of, again, the social distancing, the face mask, hand sanitization, uh, disinfection, disinfecting the ventil ventilation, uh, mm -hmm. the pre-work screening, uh, providing testing. Um, mm. I, I think the key thing is reporting as well, right? Um, transparency. The transparency, the contact tracing. Um, I work where, for an agency where I'm constantly getting emails and they're informing me of, of you know, so there was a person that was contacted with COVID. And so if I was in contact with that person, they're going to let me know. And then I'm going to have to self isolate for um, X amount of days. Right. Um, and I'll still get paid. And that's the key thing, right. That I'm still going to get paid while I'm able to do this. Um, so those are things that, uh, you know, I think are, are part that are really important. The sick leave, uh, having this communication, the enforcement, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know, you know, if you want to piggyback on. Well, and, you know, I, you know, again, being here in, in Nebraska and seeing, you know, a lot of the, the children of these packing plant workers really raising the volume and sounding the alarm on all this stuff throughout 2020. You had groups like, you know, Children of Smithfield out in Crete. You had um, the solidarity with packing plant workers and, and really across the state. And at the end of the day, the lack of transparency, the lack of enforceable basic protections. That right there, you know, leaves really all of us, the people, the family members of these workers in the dark. Yes, these companies, you know, have committed to self-regulate. They took suggestions from, you know, state leadership and, and health professionals. But the reality is there's not an enforceable component that I'm aware of, and I'm not by any means an expert on this, but we have to take you know, these companies' words that things are being handled to the best possible degree that they can be for the safety of our fathers, mothers, aunts, uncles, or whoever are working in these plants. Now, in the communities, you might hear mixed things. At least I hear mixed things, mixed messages. There's still a lot of concern. But, you know, this, this type of legislation, the difference is that this will be transparent. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. This will just be a way to be transparent, to have some basic protections, nothing beyond reason. And, you know, this is something that should have happened last year, to be honest, you know, and, and to, to willfully say that this isn't, doesn't matter to say that this has been resolved, you know, to me is a blatant example of disrespect to a workforce that is here to work hard and, and raise their families and do things the right way. The Nebraska way, you know, we always pride ourselves on our Midwestern values. But if we do not stand behind these workers and give them just basic, transparent protections, then then what are we doing? You know, what, what are we doing? Yeah, you know, great points. I think, uh, you know, and, and when we think about that, these the people that are working um, in these environments, um, you know, we've got the health disparities, right? We've got mental health disparities as well, um, and, and 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 what we're asking for is 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 plain and simple dignity, man. That's what it comes down to, is having dignity for for human for humans. Um, this is a type of job that's not going to pay a high wage, right? It's hard work. This is the type of job that a lot of people benefit from, the food that we eat, right? We're sitting there and we get to enjoy our pork, our beef, our poultry. Um, but it comes from somewhere, right? It comes from somewhere. And, uh, you know, and the thing is that some of these uh, these companies are huge, huge corporations, right? Huge corporations that make so much money. Um, you know, so... At the end of the day, you know, that that's kind of my message, right? Is that we want people to have dignity, to to feel that they are taken care of in their working environments. Um, you know, so so you know, I I 
I appreciate us being able to have this conversation. This particular legislation uh, is going to be having a, a hearing, right? The committee uh, is going to have a hearing on this legislation. So what happens is these committees have these hearings and then they, uh, the senators that are a part of this committee um, will vote to determine whether they're going to push this type of legislation on to the next step. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, that's correct. Yeah. So right now this is kind of like the pre, you know, it's to a committee so they can talk about and decide whether or not this deserves to be pushed forward to, you know, the, the legislature as a whole. Yeah. So, so I know, uh, you know, through these conversations with people that are organizing, um, there's talk about um, wanting to, again, have letters of support, um, letters of support that uh, could be submitted uh, the day before the committee hearing. And these letters of support, when they are submitted, can serve as testimony um, and be, you know, a part of the record, um, which is important. Uh, all of our advocacy at any level uh, or any point in this process is important. You know, I want to make that uh, clear. Um, when we use our voice, when we advocate, um, I think especially when it comes to raza, right, of uh, our community, you know, some people will say Latino, I, I say raza. So within the uh, raza community, um, we're not as involved, we're not as engaged. Um, you know, I have a master's degree and I, I haven't been involved, you know, I, I'm learning this process. So it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, and so what I'm, I would like and I encourage people, you know, I implore the todo corazón from the heart here, you know, is that we start to, to be a little bit more involved. Um, you know, so we have templates and emails and we can kind of coach and give ideas of uh, how, to, how to submit and how to spread uh, your voice. Um, because if, if not, we've seen what happens when people uh, hold back, when people don't speak up. Um, and so, you know, record numbers of people going out to vote. So we have some momentum, right? People are uh, have an interest, people uh, have a desire. And so we wanna keep that going. Um, and again, this is just a small piece of the process. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I really appreciate the invitation to have this conversation this morning with you. Yeah, no, thank you, Chato, for, for sharing your perspective and, and raising the volume on this, because like you said, if we don't say anything, if we look the other way, if we just, you know, keep things as they are, the reality is, you know, hopefully, yes, COVID will, will get under control with the vaccines and everything, but these workers will continue to be in a position where they are the first to be impacted with the next virus or the next type of, of adversity, you know. So I think all of us really especially those of us who, who grew up now in our, you know, in our 30s, 20s, 40s, whatever, it is our time to stand up for our parents who always got up in the morning to go to work, who always did what they had to do to give us the opportunity to wear polos and to work through Zoom and all that stuff and still get paid. To me, it's, it's, it's time, all of us, to raise the volume on this issue and hopefully, you know, together with, with our representatives and our state senators, we can figure out some solutions because we need it. Right, right. You know, and and I'll say, you know, I'm not a, a policy analyst. You know, that's not my job. Um, I don't, I'm not an expert on policy, um, but I'm a community member. Again, I'll, I'll go back to that reference. I, I come here as a community member, a concerned member. So I can encourage, uh, you know, all people to get involved in this process, uh, to learn, to look up these legislative bills, uh, read through them, ask questions, um, you know, and it's okay if you disagree, right? Like if you have a different opinion, right? And that's the beautiful thing about um, our process is that we have different perspectives and different views and opinions. And um, But the thing is, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll say this, if you don't do anything about it, then to me, your opinion doesn't matter much, you know? You gotta go out and do something about it, you know? That's where the, the, the key importance comes into play, um, so. I'll kind of leave that as my last uh, last words there. Very good. We'll go ahead and wrap things up. Again, the, the legislation, the numbers to remember are LB258 is the paid sick leave legislation. I encourage everybody 
to go research this stuff. You can find stuff on the Nebraska legislature website. Uh, but again, it's LB258. And then the, the LB241 is, is the one that's targeted specifically for meat uh, packing plant workers and their uh, basic protections and transparency for, for COVID. Um, and then there's also other uh, bills that go hand in hand with this sort of stuff, like LB441, which talks about things like workers' compensation during COVID-19. Okay, so again, you don't have to be an expert on all this stuff, but it's important that all of us as a community, you know, we, we inform ourselves about this stuff and don't simply just look the other way. So with that said, thank you everybody for your time. Stay warm out there. All right.